Curtis, now that you've learned about Ken Dunn and his abstract art, we're going to try this process. The process is going to be broken into three parts. The first part is to do a lot of thinking, brainstorming, and planning in our sketchbook. You'll see that that's the first learning target on our rubric. The second learning target is going to focus on taking our abstract ideas and painting them onto a canvas bag. And then the third step in our process is using some of our sewing skills and adding emphasis and texture to our design. So let's start with the first part. Let's begin the planning portion of this project by setting up your sketchbook paper like this. Over here on the left, we've got the title, Abstract Bag, and you're gonna see that there are two sections on this page. One is a section where we're gonna list positive experiences that we may want to use as inspiration for our project. And the second is a detailed sketch of that experience or that moment. Go ahead and set that up now. Let's think about experiences from your life. We know that Ken Dunn had a number of positive experiences living in Sydney, Australia. We know that he loved snorkeling and we can see that in his art. It, his experience serves as inspiration. So what I'd like you to do is think about five different experiences and it's even better if they are really emotional or memorable because it, you're gonna have an easier time drawing them realistically. Here's some examples from my own life. I thought about when I first arrived in England to see my daughter when she was studying abroad. I thought about being at a beautiful beach in California with my family. Here in Colorado, I have memories of some really amazing camping trips in Alamosa. You don't have to go far for good memories though. I have a wonderful selection of moments just being in my own backyard. And finally, I tried to think back to being a kid and I remembered some really wonderful moments with my dad while he was doing woodworking in his wood shop. Go ahead and list five positive experiences, big or small, from your life. The next step in our process is to select the one that is really popping out to you to explore. I decided to pick this one, this moment with my dad or a series of moments being in his workshop. What I'd like you to do is try and sketch that moment realistically. So think about all the different details that you can remember from the moment. It could be details of the place. It could be smells that you remember being there, the sound of the place. Do your best to draw a very detailed image, trying to capture that moment like you were snapping a picture. Let's take some time to do that. The next part of our planning process involves taking what is very realistic and moving it to an idea that is more abstract. If you remember back to this image, um, this artist went from a really realistic sketch of a cow and he started changing it to be more abstract. 
you'll notice that as he moves through that process, that the shapes become more visible and that the overall effect of this cow becomes very simplistic, just the basic parts that make up the cow. It's actually, notice, almost, well, pretty darn unrecognizable, and that's okay. We're gonna be creating what is called a visual lexicon and this is like a set of visuals or images that are going to represent your experience in an abstract way. Here's what to do. Please set up your paper like this. Visual lexicon at the top. We're going to have five thumbnails under a column that says real life. This is representational. These are realistic drawings. Across from those, we're going to have five thumbnails. And these little squares are in a column labeled abstract. Go ahead and set your paper up to do that now. Now, what I'd like you to do for the real life column is to go back to this picture and select five objects or ideas that you want to explore. I am going to pick the table. Not pictured in this image is the stool that I am sitting on as a little kid. It happens to be the stool that I have in my classroom. That's one two. In this room, there is also a record player. So that's going to be my third one is the record player. Fourth, I'm going to explore this, which is the sawdust in the room and think about how I could represent that abstractly. And then five um, are the tools. There's all sorts of tools, so I'm just gonna put an arrow over here. So please pick five different parts of your experience, and I would like for you to draw them in these boxes. Now, because it's real life, you're gonna try and draw them as realistically as possible. And so they'll probably look a lot like they do in your sketch down here. Go ahead and give that a try. The next step in this process may be a bit of a stretch. We're trying to think in a different way. So do not feel bad if this is a challenge for you, but it's a good kind of challenge. We're gonna take now these five objects that you drew and we're gonna try and think about how we could represent them more abstractly. And I wanna show you an example of how I did this. This is an example with many steps, right? Moving from realistic to abstract. We're gonna go from here, realistic all the way over to abstract. So for example, I started with a table. So with realistic or representational art, I would try and draw this table as realistically as possible. Now I could even be more accurate, right? If I drew this with a ruler and got all the shapes just right, but you're gonna see here my attempt at a pretty realistic table okay all right so there it is now if i am moving across that spectrum to abstract i'm going to think about this table in a more simple form i'm going to think about just lines shapes and then a little later on colors so if i think about the table 
it really is a series of rectangles. And so I'm gonna draw some rectangles here. And you can see I did this process, had this flat rectangle, the top of it. It has some different vertical lines, the legs of the table. And then there's also those horizontal pieces as well. And so I've got kind of a deconstructed table. It's in its simple form. I'm gonna try that again with the, let's try a nail. So a real nail is gonna have an ellipse, right? And it's going to taper maybe something like this to some kind of point. All right, maybe it would have, um, this part might even have like a little edge here. Okay, so there's more of a realistic type name. When I want to shift it to an abstract form, again, I'm going to think about how to simplify the shape. So if I think about it, I could do a circle, if I'm thinking about the nail from the top, and then it's got a line. So that could be a representation of my nail. I could also do, if I was looking at it from the side, it might look like that in a really simple form. It could also look like, if I wanted to keep that kind of ellipse shape, maybe this, and just a triangle shape. So these could all be a simplified or abstract representation of the nail. So what I'd like you to do is take your five objects and go ahead and think about how you could simplify those parts, those images into simple shapes. Draw those shapes and lines here over on the side. Here's how I did mine as I showed you. I kind of deconstructed the table into its parts. I did the same thing with the stool that I was sitting on. These are the four legs. I'm kind of going around the edge. And then I thought about the round stool, like a circle if I looked at it from the top, or like ellipses if I looked at them from the side. When I tried to represent music coming from the record player, I drew the circle of the record and then wavy lines coming out of it to represent the sound of the music. A smell was kind of an interesting challenge that I had marked over here, my sawdust, and I drew some curls of the sawdust, but to represent them more simply, I did a spiral shape and then dots, kind of like the smell of sawdust sprinkled in the air. And then last, as you saw me do, I took nails and I tried to think of the parts a simplified part, a uh, set of parts that constructed the nail.